Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Unplugged and Uncut, the new source for sports, news, and entertainment. You live with your boy, Unique. And today we're going to get into Zach Levine and what's next. That's right. We're going to give you our top five landing spots, why this team might make sense, and how that team might look with Zach Levine on it. But before we get started, if you have not taken the time to hit that subscribe button, make sure you do. I will be giving away a PlayStation 5 Disc Edition, one game of your choice. And all you have to do to be entered to win is be an active subscriber and leave comments in the comments section. That's it. But without further ado, let's get into Zach Levine and what might be next. We're going to give you those top five landing spots from five all the way to the number one spot. That's right. So let's get it started with the fifth spot being held down by the New York Knicks. The New York Knicks give Zach Levine the chance to be the face of the franchise, go-to score in a very, very large market in the mecca of basketball, Madison Square Garden. He'd be playing next to R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle. They do have Cam Reddish, Zach Levine. Ooh, that's a nice four. Not to mention, you're going to want to make sure you re-sign Mitchell Robinson if I'm the New York Knicks GM and I'm bringing in Zach Levine. That is my starting lineup right there. R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, Cam Reddish, Zach Levine, Mitchell Robinson. That is a very versatile starting lineup. And you got players all over the board that can get you buckets. And Zach Levine could be the leader of that young bunch. Not to mention the veteran leadership you got coming off the bench with players like Derrick Rose. And if you keep Evan Fournier a microwave off the bench as well. That is right. The New York Knicks offer the fifth most attractive spot for Zach Levine. Coming in at number four, we got the Portland Trailblazers. That is right. Now, you might say the New York Knicks have more to offer than the Portland Trailblazers. However, Portland is the closest that Zach Levine could get to playing in Seattle. That is right, the closest place to playing at home. He'd have a chance to pair a dynamic duo with Dame Dollar. If you wanna add in Anthony Simons into that and say they're a trio, you can do that as well. But Portland, really the only reason they're in the fourth spot is because of how close and the overall location to Seattle. That is right. So that makes these top three spots very interesting. Holding down the third spot, we got the San Antonio Spurs with DeJounte Murray actively recruiting Zach Levine. Now things could get really interesting around the draft with the San Antonio Spurs. They have all type of assets available and you might see them try and move from the ninth spot up in the draft somewhere. And let's say they're able to pick up Paolo Bancaro and they got DeJounte Murray. The only thing left stopping the Seattle three from being formed would be Zach Levine. And the unique situation with the San Antonio Spurs is they can offer that max contract without needing a sign and trade. That is right. They would not need a sign and trade. Now, a sign and trade could help them and help the Bulls. So it could help both teams. But I'm saying they can get it done without that. So it puts them in a very unique situation. And we could see the Seattle three being born in San Antonio. That is right. Our number three team, the Spurs, would look a little something like this. DeJounte Murray, Zach Levine, Keldon Johnson, Yaka Pertle. I'm not going to state the power forward because, of course, in our scenario, we just said Paolo Bancaro, but we can't say that because we don't know what's going to happen. So we'll just leave that. They would also have Vassell, Primo, and the rest of their squad. Coming in in the number two spot. Uh-oh, right below number one is the Los Angeles Lakers. That is right. Now, the Los Angeles Lakers are getting the number two spot with the circle because I think this is the least likely to happen even though I think it's his number two choice. <laughs> and the reason is, is because the Lakers just don't have the cap flexibility. Even if you want to do a sign and trade with Russell Westbrook, you would only be able to use about 18 to 20 million of Zach Levine's new contract going out. So you would have to have other players involved. 
And I'm not so sure, I'm sorry, I'm not so sure that the Chicago Bulls are interested in Russell Westbrook, if they are or not. I haven't looked into that, so I would have to look into that to find out. But that's why I say it's the least likely. However, looking at the squad, LeBron James, Zach Levine, <laughs> Anthony Davis, ooh, that is a nasty trio. Be one of the best big threes in the league. LeBron James, that's right. He might be back in the finals with a squad like that. <laughs> but once again, guys, this is the least likely to happen. And it's only in the number two spot because Zach Levine absolutely loves Los Angeles. That's right. What is not to like about the city of L.A.? Man, one of my favorite places to go as a music producer. I love it when I get to go to California. Absolutely amazing. But holding down the number one spot, <laughs> let's find out who it is. And that is to resign with the Chicago Bulls. Guys, the number one spot for Zach Levine to go is the Chicago Bulls. And I can give you 50 plus million reasons why. 50 plus million. That's right. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Ooh. If I'm Zach Levine coming off of surgery, there's no way. I'm turning down that 50 plus million dollar contract. I mean, not 50 plus million, but you guys know what I mean. That additional 50 million to make. Now, if I just want to go play with my friends in San Antonio, or I want to be in the Mecca and I think I can make it up in New York, or I want to be closer to home, maybe those are reasons you don't resign with the Bulls. But man, that is a lot of bread. Yes, <laughs> not to mention the Bulls are loaded. When they were healthy, they jumped out to the first place spot in the Eastern Conference. Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Vucevic, uh, Patrick Williams. <laughs> These guys are loaded. Kobe White. <laughs> I could keep going and going. <laughs> but yeah, so the Bulls, uh, Alex Caruso, can't forget about the Caruso. Um, but the Bulls have a really good squad. They did face some injuries, and the injury bug hit them. Now, the issue with the Bulls could be, again, that leading or go-to score. But if I'm De uh, DeMar DeRozan and I'm the Chicago Bulls, I'm like, hey, Zach, come back. Let's run this back. If I need to make sure I'm only taking 20 shots to your 22, We'll make that happen. You can take two more shots than me because you still want two go-to scores on a team that's trying to compete. You want multiple players that can just go get buckets. So that's why I got the Bulls as the number one spot. He's familiar with the team. He's got 50 plus million reasons to say yes. <laughs> and they might have something to prove. Like I said, they were in the number one seed until they started facing massive amounts of injuries so guys those are my top five spots top five landing spots on what's next for zach levine i'm gonna go ahead and get my popcorn in the microwave and get it ready so i can check in the comments to see how y'all feel about where zach levine might land and let's get into it let's talk about it but that's all we got for this part of the episode for now your boy is out peace